Uh, prior to the presentation here, if each of you would grab this, I'm going to give you the abridged version. Any of, uh, I think it's real important to listen to Paula tonight. If you have any further questions of me, you can always stop and see me. Um, NASH is the acronym for National Association of University System Heads. Catherine Lyle, the president of Harvard, Ohio State, UCLA, they all belong to this. Okay? They are taking on as one of their number one issues, educationally across the country, the concept of pre-K-16. I've always worked hard. Paul has always worked hard. We've always worked hard not talking to each other as institutions. Okay? And if you if you take a look at that piece, and then if you also read the Bridge Project, which is the next document, uh, it does a fabulous job of identifying the problem. And then the solution has to just come from people rolling up their sleeves and doing something about it. So that's what the Bridge piece does. The next document in there is this page here horizontally. It says current best practices pre-K-16. These are my notes from me just doing research on what's happening. This is, if you read this, you can pretty much grasp in about 30 seconds, this is what's happening nationally with best practice around pre-K-16. Next, the following document. This is the very abridged version, as you can see. The next document comes from Catherine Lyle's office where it says University of Wisconsin Board of Regents, Pre-K-16 Principles in Action. Mm -hmm. uh, the Board of Regents has directed uh, administration at Catherine Lyle's office that this will be a top priority along with economic development in the state of Wisconsin. That's awful high priority coming out of Catherine, Catherine Lyle's office. And you can read this document to see what they've outlined. There is a pre-K-16 council in the state of Wisconsin, and instead of listing everybody who's on there, I'm just going to define it this way. All the big kids in the state of Wisconsin, all the big players, Libby Burmaster, Catherine Lyle, Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, WASB, Super Tennis Association, all of the big kid players sit on that pre-K-16 council. This is all just kind of happened in the state. That was formed last spring. Um, the next article here, this is in layman's terms, or article that I wrote for ASCD, and uh, it's just a two-page document outlining the pre-K-16 issues. So you can take a look at that, and that went out to about 1,200 people across the state, uh, the Curriculum Directors Association. That was my abridged version. Now I would like to introduce to you Dr. Paula DeHart from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And before you begin, I just want to say where we've come from. Frank and I have had a series of meetings with the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, and they have come up here in force a number of times, met with our entire administration, and we brainstormed a number of things, which we will outline here. And uh, Paula has sat here with Frank and I, we've gone through everything that we're doing, and then we jointly framed the context for this master's degree. Uh, in, in a nutshell, I'll say this, I've been here 13 years, this is one of the most wonderful things we've worked on, because in a short period of time, this will really impact kids. Because we have such busy people, our teachers are, honestly, they are so busy that any way we can work smarter and save more time, it, it's a benefit. So by us understanding the pre-K-16 concept and having these conversations between our institution and theirs, this is what has resulted. An on-site master's degree where their professors come to Merrill and teach uh, a rigorous, high-quality master's degree program aligned with where we're taking the district. Dr. Paul DeHart. Thank you. I'll just uh, start my slideshow here. Tom, would you do that light on the side, please? I actually would just like to start by saying uh, being in Merrill feels almost like being on home turf for me. I grew up in Tomahawk and have very fond memories of coming to Merrill for the Lincoln County Fair. And also, and this probably dates me, but I remember when Merrill had a pretty happening youth center and I would come down and <laughs> attend 
dances here, so um, it's wonderful to be here, and I'm very excited about this partnership between UW Stevens Point and uh, the Merrill School District. I, this is my eighth year as a faculty member at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Um, I'm currently doing uh, one of the site-based master's degree programs. We're doing one right now in Berlin, so I'm in my second year of that. And I just want to say that I'm so excited about the one that we will be doing in Merrill because uh, the thing that's, I, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of exciting things happening with the teachers we're working with in Berlin, but what is really exciting is Merrill is already moving forward and doing some of the things that we're trying to get teachers to do, and so I think that's just going to speed up the process and really uh, uh, make the impact even greater. I just want to explain, uh, you may wonder, what is a site-based master's degree program? Um, the top one is probably the one you're most familiar with, and that's where teachers come to, uh, if it's UW-Stevens Point, they come to our campus, take a series of classes, probably over um, six, seven years, a class a semester, maybe one or two in the summer, and at the end of that time, they have a master's degree program. The site-based master's degree program at the bottom is a very different format where we bring the master's degree program to your school district. We come here, uh, it lasts for two years, we work with the same group of teachers, uh, about approximately 50 teachers, and uh, we meet one weekend a month over that period of two years, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and the really neat thing about the program is it's tailored to meet the needs of the district which this seems like a perfect night to be talking about that because just in what I heard presented here tonight, I heard concerns about the math curriculum, I heard concerns about um, literacy, about after school programs, and our program can fit with what you're trying to do. So if the teachers in your district need um, support in math, we can make that a focus of our graduate program, bring in top-notch people to talk to the teachers and work with them and uh, help them with that process. Site-based master's degree program, as I explained, two-year program in the district, emphasizes teacher as leader and teacher as researcher. Just wanted to comment, again, what I'm seeing already happening in your district with the teachers that attended uh, the data ret retreat. Um, that's what teacher is researcher. That's the power of that. The teachers themselves can interpret data, decide what they need to do in their classrooms, and carry that out. Uh, our program is aligned with Wisconsin Education Educator Standards, which is, these are the standards that guide the program. Best Practice in Education and the National Teacher Standards. Uh, develops curriculum based on the professional needs and interests of the participants. That's what I mentioned. Whatever the Merrill District is working on, we can support that. And the other thing, our program is very rigorous. Um, it's not, you know, okay, we'll come for the weekend and kind of, you know, talk about how the Packers are doing and then go home and at the end of it we get a master's degree. It's very rigorous. It requires a lot of reading uh, and uh, projects that are quite rigorous. What we can do in the Merrill site-based program, develop curriculum instruction that increases student learning and aligns with state and local standards. Again, a big focus of your discussion here tonight. Interpret and utilize standardized test data. So we can do for a group of uh, up to 50 teachers what that data retreat does. We spent a whole weekend on um, interpreting data. Create individual professional development plans and professional portfolios which is going to be required in the new PI 34 uh, regulations anyway. We will have your teachers uh, ready to do that. They'll already be uh, carrying that out in the program, so when they're being asked to do it in the district, they'll know what to do. Develop and implement a master teacher project that addresses specific needs of the Merrill School District. This is comparable to a master's thesis, so, um, but the thing that's really nice about it is it's directly applicable to the district. So. If you want an after-school program started, a group of teachers can do that as their project for uh, the master's degree. And the other thing this will help teachers to do is pass the National Board Certification. And this I'll just quickly run through, give you some highlights of the program, what happens. 
participants become a community of learners. And Don mentioned tonight that's really what you want to have happen in your school. So this already gets them understanding the power of a learning community, and they take that back to the school. Use action research strategies to investigate their own classroom learning environments and instructional practices. Again, this is teachers collecting data, deciding on an action plan based on data, and then collecting more data to see was their action plan effective. Concentrate on professional and personal renewal. We have a range of teaching experience anywhere from two years of experience to uh, 30 plus years of experience. And the comment we hear so often from our experienced teachers is, I can't believe how excited I am again about teaching and about trying new things in my classroom. So this is wonderful. And those are the teachers you want to be excited because they have all that wonderful uh, classroom experience under their belts. Uh, participants are committed to teacher excellence and teacher leadership. The curriculum is thematic, meaning it isn't separate courses. It's really uh, looking at best practice and it's carrying that through throughout the whole two years. <coughs> Following core areas of emphasis. Again, best practice in instruction and assessment. Active learning and student engagement. Understanding by design and concept-based instruction, which is helping teachers to focus on what is the important understandings you want students to have examination of school culture and climate. What kind of climate are they creating in their classrooms? How can they work together better as teachers in the school environment? Mentoring, we have mentoring within the program and teachers are learning within the program how to go and mentor other teachers in their district. Effective use of technology, very he heavy emphasis on technology. We have teachers who are now creating websites for their schools, for their classrooms, and uh, also using technology more effectively with their students. Key elements, again, it's standards-based, best practice in curriculum instruction and assessment, and these are the things the teachers do. The master's teacher, pro teacher project, which I mentioned, they create a professional portfolio, which is basically how they show their growth over the two years in the program, and the professional development plan I mentioned. Um, professional development plan, they set goals for personal and professional growth based on the Wisconsin education standards. Achievement of goals is monitored throughout the two-year program. So they have an advisory group that they meet with consistently over the two years that helps to monitor the growth, challenges them to push themselves, and helps to celebrate their accomplishments. Portfolio is another big piece of what they do, which, um, again, this is something that PI 34 will be requiring that teachers develop professional portfolios. And I've talked about this, the Master Teacher Project. Based on the needs of the school district, we encourage the teachers to talk with their administrators to actually decide what those projects will be, and then they conduct action research to decide uh, to study the impact of the project. <coughs> The reading list I just give you uh, to show that it's really the best and latest of what's available in research. And uh, Don mentioned that this is a partnership and the site-based master's degree program is just one piece of that partnership. The other thing that uh, UW Stevens Point and Merrill will be doing together, the CoStar program, which is a program for new teachers. Uh, mentoring program, which again will be part of the new PI 34 regulations, and leadership training for administrators. Um, this is basically the end of my piece, Don. I don't know if you want to say anything more about the I'll other just, pieces of this part. I'll just wrap up real quick. When Paula referred to the CoStar issue. That's this page in the document. Mm -hmm. Karen Hall, myself, and Dwayne Heinzman from University Stevens Point <laughs> worked on this piece. There's a few more, though. John Greenwood, myself, and Henry St. Maurice from UW Stevens Point <coughs> are working on a couple more pieces of this. And uh, you're not inventing the wheel on this, Wausau and Douglas. No. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, we, Catherine Lyle, has charged all campus presidents to go down this road. And and I will say this, and Frank and I have had this conversation. <laughs> 
Um, our <coughs> relationship with Stevens Point to get all of this done in the time we have has been quite wonderful. I mean, you they have bent over backwards. They've been up here a lot. And uh, it, it's just really, really exciting to see. And really, truly, this is the beginning. And, and John, John uh, Green and I were talking today that you know, the farther we get our oar in the water and doing these things, each of them lead to more great things that we do down the road. So it's, it's like our best work is still out there somewhere. Okay? The other things that you have here are two letters that I've sent out. One is an informational piece to faculty about this. And to date, we have 37 faculty who have signed up to come to Paula's meeting next week. That doesn't mean we'll have 37 people to take this. But we are partnering with Tomahawk now. We built that into the plans way back in September that if we didn't get up to the cohort group of 50, <coughs> that we would expand it to the region. And, and uh, I'm sure between us and Tomahawk, we will fill that up. And the other piece that we have, and I think we did send it out to you earlier, is the informational brochure that went out to all the faculty. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, we're done. Thank you. Um, questions? Joe. Sure. Uh, the cost. This is the cost. This is your cost to the district. The cost are the cost will be all uh, paid for by the faculty themselves. This is their out of pocket costs. Okay, that was one question. Thank you. So there's no cost to the district. Um, is the, are these last three bullets part of the process also? No, um, I've been working with Henry. Karen and I've been working with him on mentoring. We, you know, we've, we've, you've seen our big, thick document, a new teacher orientation, and we're revising <coughs> our expectations. But the way that's going to turn out is we're going to jointly, again, Henry and I will sit down and frame what those expectations are that we want in our mentors here, and then look at how we can collectively provide opportunities. And we, we've sat down, Karen and I sat down with our mentors in the end of August and said, the, here's the rest of the story about what others are experiencing in mentoring. Do you want this? And they all said, and this is great about our teachers, all of them said, yes, we do want that information. Now for us to find out the time and a way for them to get that, that's what we're going to work out. So these, these are all kind of next pieces, Joel. Okay. Are we looking for a motion? No, this nope. is informational. This is informational. We don't have to endorse it. Nope. As a board. It's not on as an action item. Well, I'd just like to say that I, I'm very excited about this. I think it's an outstanding uh, idea between the University of uh, Stevens Point and Merrill Public Schools to get into that kind of partnership. So I appreciate the efforts for that. I'm excited about it, too. Tom, mm -hmm. um, did you have a question? Oh, something struck me that you mentioned in terms of some of the uh, some of the areas that you get into, and one of them was examination of school school culture and climate, which is something I guess I, I really thought was important to look at. Uh, is that the kind of thing that someone would do as their individual you know, like master's thesis project, or will that be part of the program itself in terms of looking at that at that issue formally? Could be both. Could be both. It would be up to the participants to decide if that's something they wanted to do as a part of their uh, master's project. Um, but that's something we are continually talking about as part of the program. I would sure like to see that in the school district. Examine that issue. It hasn't been done. It should be nice to see. Well, a big part of that, as I mentioned, is they experience what it feels like to become part of a learning community, and they want to take that back to their school. So, I mean, I think that's a real powerful part is that they experience it. Um, uh, because it's a cohort group, will there be opportunities from, for some of our um, teachers who perhaps have six or 12 credits towards their masters to leave, uh, leave themselves into any of these classes? Um, we have people in the program who have credits already that they've taken. Now, the thing is, it's not, well, you can take part of it for a couple credits. So, okay. basically, no. the credits that they've taken work for them in that they bring that knowledge to the group, but it doesn't count towards completing the master's degree. So, in, in a sense, it's like starting over. But we've found from people now who have credits, they bring that knowledge into the learning community. So it actually helps everybody. I appreciate that. And I have one other question. 
um, looking at this last screen, um, I see that that point has really take some, taken some initiatives on developing programs to um, support PI 34 and, and state, <coughs> the state standards for licensing of teachers. My question under the last piece, leadership training for administrators, will there also be a piece in that area for um, our administrators to receive training for evaluations? It's a big piece in our piloting, and I, I guess I'm looking at it as a possible critical piece for our administrators. Actually, I think we need to save that as a separate future board agenda item because we have been working it quite a bit. And again, part of the 3K16 nationally, one of their top priorities with across the nation within the pre-K-16 concept is that bullet there. Now, we've drafted a document on organizational instruction leadership just like we did in all the other pieces we've done in the district, so we kind of know what we're talking about. We've taken all the administrators through a half-day session on what is this. Now, when you look at the implications from that is our staff development plan. It is how does that influence our hiring over time? How does that influence our grooming of potential administrators in the district? And should this be including not only administrators, but people who are in less formal leadership roles? And John, what, we talked and we met, Fritz, we, met, we all met on this issue for two hours this morning. Uh, oh, another thing we've discussed is, you know, we, we ba basically are a rural customer relative to who provides that certification currently in the state of Wisconsin. It's Madison, Superior, Cardinal, Stritch, who provide, okay, so what we, what we need to further do with Catherine Lyle's office is find out, are they going to empower UW Stevens Point to do this, or, we do, or do we need to do this in the distance learning lab via UW Madison? And then uh, also under the auspice of PI 34, as you know, the state funded a series of pilot schools who got some money, and we got some of that as well, to do some of the things we're doing with mentoring in, in uh, that slice of PA 34. They are also going to have a second rendition of that and have a series of pilot schools in the state of Wisconsin under this for, for uh, to, to figure out these types of issues around administrators working toward master administrator certification like master teacher certification. Yeah. I'm sure I've missed some of the things, but it, it's very involved, and our plan as a district is to develop a package so by the year 2004, we have those questions answered <coughs> internally so for our people to be in conversations with other people, you know, the Green Bays and the Allenbrooks, et cetera, who are going down that road as well, administratively in Wisconsin, and then to make sure that people nationally who are doing the same type of thing are, are reading and reacting to our work and vice versa. We're making those contacts now. So our plan is to have that package as a whole package down the road, but we're, we're at we're at the discussion <coughs> points administratively about that. And okay, I guess uh, my point here is not not as um, broad a scope in terms of a master's degree in in education administration, but for us to customize a course based on our local need, which is oh. let's help Fritz do a better job of evaluating. Or let's help, um, you know, poor, poor friends. <laughs> Bring it up. But, no, <laughs> but, but I'm saying a class, a class that's customized that all of our administrators who are going to do any evaluation of teachers, that they get grounded in PI 34, and they get grounded in good skills for evaluation. One course for all of our administrators to take. A second course might be whatever it is. So we that we would develop a local customized sequence for our administrators to improve. And it, and it could be tied to a master's degree, not necessarily. Could be tied to how we view um, the professional growth for our administrators. Now, the administration has already identified that. That's already Great. identified in our document. But what we haven't done is said, let's get, let's do that now. Okay. And if you feel we should do that now, then we need to communicate that back through us because we can set that up. Well, I just think it's an opportunity to tie to our teacher evaluation right. pilot. This is maybe a topic that we're yes. a little off for future discussion, and, and I'm sure Don can bring it back if you want to do something further with that, if that would be all right. Any other questions on the uh, on the presentation? Okay.
seeing none, I will thank you for your patience in waiting, and, and thank you for bringing this wonderful opportunity to our teachers. So we'll just relax for a minute while you clear the table so we can see the public. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next time, would you draw me out one of the maps? Give us a hand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
boy or girl? Boy. Another <laughs> boy? Yeah. I'll just introduce this and, and turn over to Bethany. Frank and I have gone through, and, and I've met with Beth, Bethany several times. Frank and I have read through everything. And what we, what we basically are doing is making a formality out of something we already do that really needs to be a formality. And uh, Bethany put it all together, Frank and I reacted to it, and then we, we suggested some changes, Bethany made those, and uh, basically at this point, it's uh, what we're just looking for an, an approval. And, um, as Bethany and I have talked about, um, we discussed it with the administrators, and they too know we're doing these things. This just puts it formally into action. Okay. And uh, so I'm not. I don't think we need to spend you know, a great deal of time on deliberation. Okay. Um, there was a piece in your packet, so if everybody can refer to that, and I'll let Bethany make some comments about it, and then we'll see if there's any questions. Yes, there, there um, was information I tried to put together just sort of a brief overview of the three big mentoring programs for Big Brothers, Big Sisters, but maybe I'll just verbally go through it quickly. And what this really involves is we uh, find volunteers from the community to go into the school system during the school day to meet once a week, one-on-one -on -one with a child. And as Don indicated, this is just to formalize the relationship, what Big Brothers Big Sisters will be doing um, within this program and the kinds of things that we need to make it work productively from the school. Some basic things like, I know when we go into the different schools, we need to have a contact person. How are we going to arrange lunch for this volunteer to come and meet over lunch? Or how is the schedule going to be arranged if there are schedule changes for the child at the meeting time? Things like that. So these are just clarifying some of those expectations. The relationship between the volunteer and the child lasts for the school year, and there's the opportunity then for it to resume the following school year. And we do, through Big Brothers Big Sisters, the um, formalized background checks. We do three um, law enforcement background checks and also use the school's form for the volunteer. Um, I don't know if you call it the background checker. I've forgotten the name of your form, but we use that form as well. Okay. The volunteer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Bethany or Don? Um, no, but I'm ready to make the motion to approve okay. the memor memorandum of understanding between Big Brothers Big Sisters and Maryland Public School System as presented. Do we have a second? Joe? I'll say that. Okay. Do you have any comments, Lynn? No, but I, I um, yes, I do. I appreciate the pre-information. It was very helpful. I appreciate the, the new form that we're using. It's very clear. Helps you review it. Gives you a first look. Let's you go to the detail. Let's you come back. Um, and I feel comfortable after your comment about good background checks. I think that's absolutely critical when you're working with volunteers and, and our kids. So appreciate that. Joe, any no comments? comments? I think it's a worthwhile idea. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Louise? Yes. Um, I'm just, I don't know the answer. Um, do we still do big buddies? Or is that we don't do that anymore in high school? <coughs> Yeah, uh, the, the Big Buddies program is something that, that uh, has been running for a long time, and for the last couple of years it, it dropped off. Now we're reinitiating that. Now okay. Tetzloff uh, is taking mm -hmm. the Will it be the same, same kids? Uh, it will be the same concept of having high school kids uh, be Big Buddies and Big Sisters for um, elementary kids. The Octagon Club is going to be one. Uh, group that we're tapping into for those sorts of matchups, okay. and Bethany has been involved. Okay. So you you kind of put it all together. Yes, so you know you know the whole well, thing. What what we're mm -hmm. what we're attempting to do right now is is uh, collaborate with the Big Brothers Big Sisters okay. program, the Octagon Club, and Al Tetzloff, who's run the Big Buddies program. We also would like to see. Uh, some uh, connection with Link Crew eventually, but those three things with Big Buddies and uh, the Big Brothers Big Sisters and, and Al Tesloff and the Afghan Club, that's what we're trying to focus on. So hopefully that will be viable. So your volunteers come from with outside the school sure. and, and with Big Buddies and students within the school? So Actually, ours, 
volunteers come from within the school mm -hmm. or outside of the okay. school. And um, John and Alan, I actually met, and I, I was just hesitant because I've been a little out of the loop with the baby for the last few weeks. But um, uh, what we talked about is for those students that do want to volunteer and do this type of program, the thing that Big Brothers Big Sisters can provide is all of the tech, all the support, <coughs> all the organization, all doing all of that background check. So then that takes that time. Oh, it takes that time that was used up by staff in the school, the Big Brothers Big Sisters can do it and still have the same effect, helping the elementary school children, giving the high school kids an opportunity to volunteer. So we thought it was a nice partnership. Okay, Louise. Chris? I have a big brother or a big sister for one of my students at Jefferson. I wish I had 10 more. It's great. It works out really well. It is absolutely zero inconvenience, zero problem at the school level. <clears throat> a lot of the things are taken care of ahead of time. It's basically just giving the opportunity, and it's wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we vote? Okay, so the question is, or the motion was to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization and the Merrill Area Public Schools. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? That motion carries. The relationship is endorsed. And thank you so much for bringing this to the board and for waiting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming here early. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, communications. Um, the first item is uh, Human Growth and Development Committee. Uh, Don Vigut's been talking with John Crone, and they will be meeting in January. And um, Jeff Peterson will be uh, taking a spot on that as the board representative, um, at least initially, he said, and as they see what direction they're going. But Jeff is going to do that. Um, the Ad Hoc Board Technology Committee, I have this high-tech forum here that I had to write out. Um, <laughs> this is, I'm following after Tom's uh, thing. I have a copyright on this format. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, uh, the Ad Hoc Board Technology Committee, um, I have a charge as we'll review the current charge of the Leadership Tech Committee and the technology needs of the district and make recommendations to the board and the Leadership Tech Committee regarding solutions to the technology needs of the district. Um, I'm hoping to have the first meeting in January. Um, board representatives will be Martha and Joe. Uh, Chris Graham, I haven't had contact with him, but Jeff told me that he talked with him and he um, has agreed to serve on the committee as a community member. And Tom Muller has a name for me of someone from Lincoln Hills. Um, Tim Mickey has agreed from the little middle school, Fritz Lurkey from the elementary school, and Brian Duran at the high school. Um, my Geezy has, and, and I don't have um, firmed up the uh, high school and middle school people yet. The other two people, I, I haven't had a chance to contact them. Brian was contacting one of them for me. Joe. I'm just curious of why, um, and so, oh, this sounds pretty good to me, but why are, is this, would this committee come back and report to the other technology committee? Well, I think because the recommendations are going there, I think they'll come to the board, but that, I guess what I meant is they would also <coughs> share their recommendations with the committee. Maybe that, That's I can make fine. that clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also have a community member to recommend, and okay. he said he would do it. Good. Joe Manigo. Okay. He is the... Um, Accountant and uh, Information Systems Manager at Northern Lawyer. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I would ask possibly Joe and Martha if they could pick a date in January and I can contact people. Um, if you two maybe would get together and let me know what you think would be an appropriate date. Um, that would be good. Do not know. I did have a couple other, and I, I thought maybe I should do that with the report of the committee meetings, but um, there were some questions at our tech meeting sure. today about, for example, there's a tech plan that is supposed to be done by the end of December, but mm -hmm. um, can it can wait until February when the teach thing is applied for? But um, but they're, they're thinking, you know, if, if we work on this and then that committee comes back with a whole new recommendation, then it was that for nothing? And do we do this all for nothing? But if we don't do it, then we don't get the money. 
So I, there's some, some concerns about that kind of thing. Do we go forward with the budget in purchasing things, or should we wait for four months to see if it's in line with what the recommendations are? And, and I think possibly if we can get this committee to meet early in January, as you, you know, we can work that issue in through that committee and decide how to do it so we won't lose the teach monies. That, well, the well, tech plan takes months to write. Right. It's, okay. it's quite involved. It's yes. Well, and I believe that yeah. you need to continue that process because we cannot jeopardize possible funding that may be excluded as a result of putting a hiatus on the, on the planning system. Um, and I, I don't necessarily see that there's an impact with uh, the ad hoc committee looking at what can be done to improve and assist the uh, existing committee. In terms of purchases, maybe there would be a difference mm -hmm. because if this is service-based somewhat yeah. and the needs of the district, maybe that would be the division <coughs> there. Did you have some more? Well, questions? just two things. First of all, Pat, uh, one is that I also have somebody in mind, but I okay. haven't talked to him yet. But the second thing is, I, my intent when I made the mo original motion was not to stop the district from doing whatever it's doing. I just, and I, and I think Martha's points are well taken with me anyway. I don't think that we ought to stop and wait for this other committee to get everything ironed out. I think that they need to move forward. They can't stop like that. She's Martha's right. She's there's a lot of things got to be done. Okay. Do you want to give me your recommendation tonight, then, or if you have a name for me later? I'd like to talk to him first. Okay, that's good. <laughs> give me a call, then, okay. Martha. Well, I I think what they what but they they were a little frustrated because if they go ahead and do it and then it's completely different, then that would be real discouraging to oh, have spent all that sure. time working mm -hmm. on something oh. that was changed. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I mean, if they wait till January to to work on it, that. It could be too late, late. and it, but it's it's the purchasing plan, with because the teach monies are basically purchases. Um, is that correct? Basically, but there's a lot of components to it about the future. I, I don't see um, the review process that the ad hoc board committee is going to make as okay. as doing anything to impair oh. the existing processes that are going on. Uh, maybe to help help understand them for themselves yeah, what, what that is. Uh, we need to continue on with that. And if there are any significant uh, programmatic changes, I think the recommendation should be to implement them at the next possible convenient time frame, be that n the next budgeting cycle or whatever. Because we do need to continue with this. We're, we're, we're not going to stop our... our teach processes, you know, midstream, we just, we just can't do that. Okay. And I spoke to John, and he will be sharing that information with this ad hoc committee as well, so hopefully they can go in the same direction when they head off on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, then I have, uh, I have a, uh, a memo that I got from Jim Portman. Does this go out to everybody? An article. An article that she wanted me to pass on if you could make copies of that for everyone. And then everyone received in their packet the um, WASB resolutions. And that will be on the January meeting um, <laughs> to discuss. And Frank has a errata <laughs> to it. Yeah, um, they sent out a sheet that had some changes in their listing. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if Lynn wants to make any comments on that now, or just, uh, just since she'll be the WASB delegate. I guess only regarding this is it will be on the January. I'd really like to you to peruse them all, but pick two or three that are critical. I'll do the same, and then we'll have those. Uh, prioritize those for the discussion points. It's important for me to have your opinions, though, um, on all of them. So um, maybe you can. We're not going to spend four hours on it, though, because we don't have time. So please email me if something jumps out at you so that I can be prepared to lead that discussion in January. Thank you. Thank you. And remember to bring your packet Have with it. you again so we don't have to re everything. Um, reminder that the incumbents that are not renewing need to have their papers in by December 21st. 
and the filing of um, papers for nomination is January, January 2nd. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. January 2nd. Kurt, <laughs> just in case you're filing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and Martha has shared with me that she will not be running again. I have not heard from anyone else, but we will, we will miss you, Martha. <laughs> Thank you for all of your hard work. I'll miss the process. And there also should have been a memo in there from me reiterating our um, August 8th meeting where we uh, decided to do board consensus to try the report that was on the front of uh, the big brother, big sister um, packet and, and Frank has shared that with the administrators and um, we're asking that, I'm we're finally getting around to trying to implement it so hopefully doing that will give us um, a little clearer way to look at things and uh, I think we can assess it again in February and see if we would like to tweak it or if it's working or if we want anything else different on the reports. And uh, I think other than this little ditty that I'll pass out, that's all I have. Frank, what do you have? Well, <clears throat> I am going to have reflected in the minutes, and I'm not going to read all of the things that I've sent to the board as information. But the, the uh, WSB pieces, the QEO, the revenue cap stuff, the money at Redwood, da 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 da. In an in your packet, you pass these around. Uh, there was a green sheet that Lynn was alluding to earlier regarding the EEOC issue and the cost uh, litigation, legal cost. With that, this two-page piece that's coming around right now is a recent update from Ken Cole again requesting strongly that school districts support this. It, uh, the cost of this, had it gone south on us, would have been several hundred thousand dollars to deal with this retirement issue uh, that we talked about several months ago. And it, it, it um, was school districts that have thus far participated. So unless the board objects, I will follow the request of Ken Cole to financially support uh, at his direction or recommendation uh, the financing of the litigation process associated with the EEOC claim on the retirement issue. Are there any objections from any members on that action? Okay. Seeing none. That will go forward. Anything else? Nothing okay. else. Okay. Then we're up to, uh, there is no old business. We have approved minutes for November 14th and November 28th. They're in your packets, and I believe everyone was present on the 14th, and Joe was absent on the special meeting of the 28th. Jeff. I'll move approval of the minutes as printed. Do we have a second? Kurt? I'll second. And that's for both meetings. Okay, thank you. Uh, any corrections, additions? Okay. Seeing none, there is a motion to approve the November 14th and November 28th board meeting minutes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Abstaining on the 28th because I was out of town. Thank you. Minutes are approved. Moving on to approving claims and vouchers. Lynn? Yes, we have two. Um, um, claims and accounts payable dates to approve. Uh, one for accounts payable for November 28th and payroll vouchers for that date. Um, uh, the Finance Committee uh, um, reviewed those with Pat. Joe was not able to be there because that was the week that he was out of town, so Jeff and I did that. And uh, we, we approved those um, and we'll bring them to you for authorization. Uh, the same for tonight. Joe and I reviewed the vouchers and accounts payable dated December 12th. So we bring those to you for approval. Okay. Are you making them? I'm making them a motion. motion. Yes. Do I have a second? Well, I can second the ones for tonight. And uh, oh, because they're being duly. I can do both of them if she sure. says they're okay. I don't care. It's, it's a second. <coughs> okay. Do you care? Okay. okay. So we have a motion by Lynn, second by Joe to approve the claims and vouchers from the 28th and also from today. Uh, any questions on those? 
I would like to comment on one thing. I appreciate Pat's preparation tonight of a report that we asked for regarding cell phone usage in the district, and we will be reviewing that at committee, um, and also for her um, preparation of questions that I asked over an email, and it was a, a wonderful way to gather information, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, and we are ready to vote on the claims and vouchers. Sue, would you do a roll call vote, please? Kurt Beckus. Aye. Joe Fink? Aye. Tom Muller? Aye. Jeff Peterson? Aye. Martha Sandholm? Aye. Louis mm -hmm. Schutz? Aye. Tom Blutner? Aye. Ron Bain? Aye. Pat Brewer? Aye, with an abstention on check number 38312 to Pine Ridge Station. Okay. Claims and the vouchers are approved. Motion carried. Um, I don't believe we have any district retirements or resignations this evening. Um, then we will move on to district hirings and contract additions. Mr. Klippel. Well, we have not at this time, but I um, would like the board to uh, consider a uh, expansion of the stage mm -hmm. program, which is the yellow packet. Um, as you know, uh, brief background, we have SAGE uh, at uh, three elementary schools in Merrill, Cape Woodridge, Jefferson, and Washington. And we received funding for SAGE based on the, um, based on, in two areas. One is uh, we used title, a Title VI class size reduction grant to support SAGE in Merrill. And that grant is $111,018. And that's a, that's a fixed grant that we know how much we're going to get. And the other revenue source for SAGE is from the state of Wisconsin based on the amount of free reduced children that we have in grades K1 and 2 at those three buildings. And we receive $2,000 per child that is qualifies for free reduced lunch at those buildings. And when we budgeted for SAGE last summer, we used last year's free and reduced count at those grades to, to budget, to guess how much money that we we're going to receive. And we, we, were, we were intentionally conservative because when we came to the board last, or two years ago, and talked to you about the SAGE program, we said that we will not use uh, local levy dollars to support SAGE in this district. And that was a commitment that we made that we we're going to use outside sources to fund SAGE. So we wanted to make sure that we were conservative in our estimates as far as how much funding that we we're going to get. And we estimated that our funding from the state of Wisconsin would be $282,000. When the free and reduced lunch, um, the actual free and reduced lunch participants came in, in September, we found out that we had more children receiving free and reduced lunch at those three sites in grades K through two than we thought we were going to have. And in fact, it's quite a difference of uh, 80, based on the, the, the difference, our revenue is $84,000 higher than anticipated. So what the elementary principals um, and I did is we wrote a letter to uh, the, the DPI, the people who are in charge of state, uh, SAGE, and pretty much asked a couple questions about what we're supposed to do with this money, the more money than we thought. And they wrote a uh, quite terse response back saying, spend it, and no uncertain terms. And the fact that you have some class sizes that you can continue to reduce, um, you have some more staff development needs. Um, you need to be using the school more. Um, so you need to spend that money. So um, what uh, Karen and Fritz and Mark did is they went back to their staff at each site and said, you know, we have a, a problem. It's a good problem, but we have this issue that we need to spend the additional revenues that we received. And how can we do that without disrupting what we already have now. Because it'd be easy to say, yeah, we want to add a lot of staff here, and we want to get more teachers in the classroom, reduce those class sizes even more. But we've already started the school year, or we're a third of the way through the school year right now, 
and routines have been established. Um, children are comfortable with their teachers, especially at those young ages. Um, how can we add staff without disrupting the whole process that we've started? And make sure that if we do add staff, it'll be a smooth transition to lowering the class sizes. And so um, what we came up with at each site um, is to, to do that, uh, we could hire two FTEs addition with the $84,000. And one of those FTEs would go to Kate Goodrich. And um, based on the amount of time, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but Mark uh, mm -hmm. established his uh, report on how the FTE would be added at Kate Goodrich. And basically, it would be a half-time person at kindergarten and a half-time person at first grade. And then so with a little bit of rearranging, Mark could get in those half-time people, utilize them, and learn mm -hmm. the class size without being a complete disruption for the kids in kindergarten and first grade. At Jefferson School, um, the other full-time person, so one FT is going to go to Kate Goodrich. The other new full-time FT would go to Jefferson. And again, Fritz would rearrange the SAGE at Jefferson to accommodate that full FTE. And what he would do is he would send a person who's currently half-time at Jefferson, half-time at Washington. That person would stay at Washington full-time. So every site is going to benefit from this. And the, um, so in, that, in essence, Fritz will pick up a, an additional 0.5 at Jefferson and Karen will pick up an additional 0.5 at Washington. And so it's a complicated plan, it's, but yet it's the, the most simple that we could come up with to lower the class sizes, to satisfy DPI's requirement that we spend the money and be least disruptive for students. So yeah, I can answer questions and get into as much detail as you want, but uh, what we're looking for is a recommendation to authorize administration to hire an additional 2.0 FTE SAGE teachers to be split between Kate Goodrich, Jefferson, and Washington for the second semester of the 2001-2002 school year. And the second semester is inclusive, second semester only. These would be half-year contracts that we issue to the teachers. Okay. Joe. Just a couple of quick questions first, if I may. Uh, and then what happens next year? Do you anticipate us getting the same kind of money back for SAGE, or do you have any idea? <laughs> I think I'll defer to the superintendent on that one. You just don't know? SAGE is, is one of the <clears throat> talking points among legislators in Madison as to its survivability in the budget crunch. So we do not know. OK. But we're hopeful. It's a very, very positive program. We're hopeful that it will continue. but. In, in Madison right now, nobody knows what's going to happen. I agree with you, Frank. I think it's a very positive program, too. Uh, second question is, uh, do you, after you go out and select the teachers, are you bringing them back to the board for approval like yes. you normally would? Yes. Then I move to authorize administration to hire an additional 2.0 FTE SAGE teachers to be slip, split between Kate Goodridge, Jefferson, Washington for the second semester of the 2001-2002 school year. Thank you. Do I have a second to that motion? Louise. Second. Okay. Any further comments, Joe? No. Louise, any comments? Ron. You've got the teachers already selected? No, we don't. Um, what kind of teachers are you looking for? Young, older ones? Ones that they're... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not kidding, Ron. What kind of teachers have you hired for SAGE? We're looking for the most qualified. <laughs> Thank you. But which kind have we gotten, though? It's the younger ones, right? The We've gotten the best qualified teachers. I know it, I know it, but uh, uh, this kind of goes personal with me, but the reason why I'm asking this question is all of a sudden we're going to get these three schools with extra SAGE, right? The other outlying schools don't have any need for extra SAGE teachers or anything? We don't. Well, the other outlying schools don't have SAGE program, right? And well, the only schools that we can afford to have SAGE and that's, spend district dollars. That's what I'm saying, and I stated this before. We had other classes. Just because they don't qualify, they've got large classes, and those kids aren't getting treated like these are. That's where I'm coming on this. Tom, did you, oh, I'm sorry. Quick response there. From earlier this evening, we talked about 
uh, indicators of student success. And, and although it's not 100% applicable, we know that economic indicators are uh, one of the factors in student success, and that's why the SAGE program was developed. It was based on free and reduced lunch counts. And Pine River does not qualify. Midway does not qualify. Maple Grove does not qualify. Scott, Scott does not qualify with the free and reduced lunch counts. And it, it's a state directive. We don't have any choice in it. And as much as we would like to take the money and divvy it up amongst all of the others, the strings from the state say this is how it will be expended. Tom? I was just looking at the dollar amount, and if you're, if you're only hiring two people for that second semester, that's not going to take care of 84 grand, is it? Well, when we, have to, when we figured, again, to not cost the school district any money, we have to look at the fringes. You know, it's more than just a salary. When we do a, a budget printout on how much a teacher costs, the school district, um, we look at you know the fringe benefits as well. So we figure for Sage, um, for a beginning teacher, when we do all the fringe benefits and all the other things the district has to pay, we figure for a full year it's about between forty-two and forty-eight thousand dollars. Okay, but but the issue is that's only for one semester. You're 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 yeah. only hiring somebody for one semester, right? So what we might have to do, though, is hire, it might not just be two people, it might be um, two or three, it might be three or four teachers because we're dividing up the FTE, so it might be a .5, Mark might have 2.5s, so it might be three teachers in a sense. So we might have to pay some benefits to, for three teachers. Well, so you, are you going to use up the two FTEs uh, for that half a semester, for that one semester, oh. half a year. Are we going to use up all the whole eighty-four thousand dollars? No. Okay, that's my point. It's right. Like no, we're going to use that money for any money left will be used for staff development, and we with Sage we can carry over money to next year. Okay. Did okay. You sorry, you sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Plus, there's there's costs for uh, materials and supplies to create a new room. We're, if this was approved and we move forward, we're going to have to create another room, believe it or not, in a new school somewhere to do this. And mm -hmm. okay. So we're working through all those processes too. Right. So okay. that was my that was my question, Mark, because you're the only one where you're taking 45 kids in two classes and moving them to 15 per each in three, and I'm going, where's the room? Come visit our library in about two months. Mm -hmm. Really? We've got conference rooms and work rooms that will probably turn into classrooms eventually. Okay. It's, it's a very complicated process, but the staff mm -hmm. has been wonderful with this whole thing, coming up with solutions. Okay, good. Martha? That was going to be part of my question, too, because I've heard a lot of comments from parents and teachers across the state that their concern is this really benefiting because um, there are two separate classes, but they're squished into the same room in many cases, or they take a, a room that was used for something else, and now they don't have they don't have the library. They don't have access to the library because it's a classroom now. And so, is this really benefiting the school? And is it really benefiting the students? Right? That, and it's sort of hard to pass up the money. <laughs> I think that's the big thing. Um, the other question was that last year when they implemented it. Um, the, the teachers needed computers, and the computers and the <laughs> came out of the tech budget. Mm -hmm. um, so are they going to need more computers, and is that again going to come out of the tech budget? Yeah, John asked that right away. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I believe that we we did we found we did need I think uh, like two more. Yeah, there's some wiring that we're going to have to put together. That's minimal cost. I don't think hardware will be okay for this second semester of this school year. <laughs> but that isn't covered by this. It could be. I mean, to talk about what they see as the benefits. And they